judge you before God finishes his work. But I can testify that please be patient with me. God is not through with me. Start in verse number. Uh, start at verse number eleven. Those of you that are standing, you're on your feet today. It's because God is good. It's the psalmist that testified, "If it had not been for the Lord." was on my side where would I be? Verse number 11 reads, Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. And after he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country. He began to be in need. So 
went and hired himself out to, as a citizen of that country who sent him to the fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the paws that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. That, that's interesting because when he had money, everybody was with him. <laughs> Verse number 17, when he came to his senses, <laughs> he said, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. He got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. The father said to his servants, Quick, Bring the best robe, put it on him, put a ring on his finger, and sandals on his feet. Bring the fat calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. <laughs> For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost. And is found. So they began to celebrate. Verse number 18 for emphasis. I will sit down and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Grab the neighbor by the hand as we prepare to pray. Make sure you're connecting with someone. Since I've seen you move and grab someone's hand, at least you can say, the preacher moved me today. <laughs> Not be lying. Look at them in the faces, they're smiling now because they weren't smiling earlier. Say, so neighbor, God wants you back. Look at your other neighbor. balcony for them. <laughs> Tell your other neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. God, wants you back home. God wants you back home. Spirit of the living God, we need you today, Lord. We realize you and you alone are the source of our strength. It's preaching time, Father. Again, I ask that my personal sin does not get in the way of your saving. The people don't hear from Chris, but they hear directly from Christ. Lord, I have no strength in me. But you let me know that when I am weak, you are strong. Lord, help me to preach a word with clarity and conviction of what thus saith the Lord. That when we leave this place, we will understand that your house is the best place for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let all of God's children say amen as you take your seat. Amen. Tech team, if you can help me out for a second. Surely, church family, we will watch a video or a short clip of an event that went viral with six-year-old Narzir Pharrell while attending church with his grandma on Christmas in Oakland, California. 
He was supposed to give a post-Christmas speech. But Brother Nazir decided that it was time for him to talk from the heart. He decided to utter these five words. Take the
teaching a parable. There are several groups in this crowd. That there are sinners. Then there's Pharisees and teachers of the law. And, and there, there's a major theme which Jesus is trying to get across. And the major theme is this, is that Jesus has limitless love for lost things. Uh, that, that's a good place for me to look at it. Jesus has limitless love for things that are lost. Here it is, church. He starts off by saying how much he loved his lost sheep. He loved the lost sheep so much, he, he loved 99 just for the one. I'm so glad that God still has me on his mind. He doesn't just stop at the lost sheep, but then he deals with the lost piece of silver. Where you get that preacher? You are valuable to God. I don't care what the world says about you. You are valuable to God. If you keep reading through this chapter 15, he deals with the prodigal or his love for the lost son. Uh, another way it could have been labeled, it could have just been labeled the story of a faithful father. Because God loves you in spite of you. So if you look at this text, we, we see a story of someone that I believe most of us can relate to in here. The word prodigal, when you translate it from Greek, it means wasteful. And, and, and passion. Is anybody that can be real in church and just wink at me? I think you ever made some wasteful decisions. You, you, you knew what God said. He said, Lord, I, I, I'm going to invest in something else. And you found out that that investment really wasn't what God wanted for your life. Yes. He's a prodigal son, y'all. He's a prodigal son. He, he, he shows his immaturity, here it is, with a terrible inquiry. The Bible says, here it is, this young man, he comes to his father and he says, Look at verse number. Comes to his father. He says these words. He says, The younger one says to his father, Give me my share of the estate. Wait, wait a minute. First of all, you ain't worth nothing. <laughs> and, and you have the audacity to say, Give me. And don't, don't get too beat up on the prodigal son because we have a giving mentality in church. Give me a husband when you can't even take care of a cat. If you give me a, a better job, but you late for the one you got already. Give me more money when you ain't a good steward of the few pennies he gave you already. Preach, Pastor God, because they ain't helping me yet. Let me help you see it. In, in, in this culture, for him to request for his father's inheritance is literally saying, you did to me. He wants his stuff, or he wants what's in his hand, but he don't care about what's in the heart. How many times we want Jesus to be a cosmic bellhop that we just want stuff to him to put in our hand, but we really don't want a relationship with him. So he, he makes this, he, he literally comes to his father and says, give me your stuff you did to me. But it's even that because the father grants it. Here it is, church family, this is for free. There's some lessons you can't learn in the house. <laughs> I thank God that he's a God of grace, but sometimes he's a God of granting requests to show me I really ain't mature as I think I am. Yeah. Uh, okay, he, let, let, me show you, let me show you how immature he is because the Bible says he, he gets the money, then he goes to a far distant country. Now here's the part I do like about the prodigal son is this, if you're going to act a fool, at least get far enough away from home. Interpretation of wild living, but I, I, I was struggling with that. But I 
think you can fill in the banks about some wild living. Uh, anybody here ever had too much communion? And it wasn't first Sunday? Wild living. Anybody here that laid down with some folks that you know God told you not to hook up with, but you did it anyway? That, that is wild living. Anybody go to some places you say, I ain't gonna never go there no more, Lord, but you found your dog. Because he squandered all his life. Well, really, he squandered all of his day. And there's some interesting things that can happen to you at Rock Bottom. There's <laughs> uh, some interesting stuff that you can begin to you begin to talk to yourself at Rock Bottom. It's okay to talk to yourself as long as you don't answer your own self. The Bible says he came to himself. Here it is, here it is, here's the, 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 the emphasis. Je Jesus is a parable, y'all, and, and his main emphasis is talking about his love for sinners. And if there was a decent statement in this message, is this. God loves you too much to leave you like you love him.
without me getting an alert. So I, I don't have to be on the campus. I just follow the money. So Dad is watching you while you wonder, but it's even better than that. It, it, it happened to my middle daughter this week. So uh, she came home. She said, Dad, you know, uh, I've been struggling a little bit in algebra, and uh, I, I didn't. I didn't finish my math test. And uh, I looked at her and I said, I know. <laughs> uh, maybe because there's an app on my phone that tracks all your dad don't move. So I'm able to watch even if they decide to wander around. And is there anybody in the building today that can thank God that he's watching over you? while you're wondering. But, but second, come, come home. Because, because God is able to camouflage you <laughs> despite your conditions. <laughs> look, look at this, y'all. First, it says, but while he was still a long way off, his father filled with compassion rain. That, that's a good place to preach right there. He ran because in that culture, uh, Jewish men did run. It, it was a sign of being undignified. But, but God loves you so much that he's willing to be undignified just to get you back into his presence. But, but it says while he was a long way off, as, as he ran to his son, wrapped his arm around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I, I sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to call your son. Well, give this his shout. But the father said to his servants, quick exclamation point. Put a ring, I'm sorry, bring the best robe. Okay, y'all are slow. He just got out of the pig. He got pig residue all over him. The father said, in the midst of you having some stinky stuff on you, I'm going to cover you. So other folks can see the true condition that you need. Is there anybody in the building today? Come on. 
subverting 